or it would be foiled by the enemy. Those three days, the Romans prayed for peace, that they would stay in control. And the Pharisees prayed that they would remain influential and in control of the people, in control of the religion that they had. And the disciples during those three days were just hoping that they too would not die. But something happened on that morning as about five women walked out to the tomb an angel, it says, in Matthew came down, descended, and rolled the stone away. Like lightning, he came down. And Jesus had risen. Now, it's interesting because God revealed, Jesus revealed himself to women first as the resurrected Lord. That was unusual because the testimony of women in those days was not highly regarded by the Romans or by the Jewish people. So the fact that God decided... The Lord decided to show himself to women first shows that he was forerunning a new reality, a new revelation. Amen? Amen. He was the liberator. What had happened in the fall of man was now being redeemed through the power of God. Amen? Amen. And what was so amazing is that Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he not, he not only showed himself to the five, but then he showed himself to the to the uh, to Peter to the t to the ten and then to the eleven right because Judas wasn't there, and then he showed himself to the two men walking to Emmaus. Remember that, and then he showed himself to five hundred people at one time. I want to tell you that your faith stands on the solid rock of truth. Not only did these disciples testified to the resur re resurrected Christ, but they gave their lives for that. Now, a man or a woman will die for something they believe is true, but no one dies for a lie. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So they realized that, that, that they had to walk in the truth that they experienced in Christ. And so when it came to the, their time to die, each one signed his testimony in their own blood. Not only do we have that testimony of all those people that had seen Christ, but 25 years later, when, we, when that scripture in 1 Corinthians was being written, 25, still most of them were still alive. Persecuted, scattered among the, 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 the dispersion during the, during the whole Roman Empire, being chased, being persecuted, even by one named Saul of Tarsus. A dedicated Pharisee, a dedicated man to God who wanted to stomp out this new movement, who wanted to stop it. He even gave approval for when Stephen was, uh, was, was um, stoned to death. He held the jackets of those who did the stoning. He was, a, he was a fierce, fierce person against the new movement of the Christian church, the way, as they were known. And yet... He had an experience on the road to Damascus that changed his life forever. In a moment, in a single encounter, his life was completely changed. The power of Christ's resurrection reached even his hardened heart and converted him to one of the greatest uh, representatives of the Christian movement ever. Not only did he appear to them, but he also appeared to his own brothers, James and Ju Judas and all, those, all four of the brothers, and they gave their life to him. They followed him as their Lord and Savior. Now, you can, you can get a lot of people to follow you, but try to get your siblings to follow you. <laughs> there is more than enough evidence, but if that wasn't enough, the Apostles' Creed was formed probably within months, but certainly within the first couple of years of the early church. This is no myth. This was not done in some dark, secret corner. This was done in the streets of Jerusalem. This was done throughout Judea. There were people going around saying, I have seen the risen Lord. And as hard as the Romans, as hard as the Pharisees tried to stomp it out, the more they tried to stomp it out, the more it spread. Because it was based on a truth they could not stop. Your faith stands on the solid rock of truth. Amen? Because the 
resurrection is not is not an inning in the game. It's the whole ball game. If Jesus didn't resurrect, then your faith is in vain. The resurrection is everything. So it has been the most attacked aspect of Christianity throughout history. And there's been all sorts of stories and, and you know boxes with Jesus' name on it, all sorts of things that tried to refute the resurrection. But you can't refute what is still going on. Today, people are still experiencing the risen Lord Jesus Christ. They are still encountering God, amen? They are still encountering his goodness and his power. He is still setting people free. He is still allowing them to, to become new creatures by the power of his resurrection. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm breaking the mics. That's a good sign. <laughs> Jesus. Nice. Praise you, Father. Glory to God. He is still setting people free. As a matter of fact, it says in Romans 8 11, it says that if that spirit, that raised Jesus from the dead abides in you. Does that spirit abide in you? Yes. Then he is going to raise you up. Your, your mortal body is going to raise it up with that same spirit. That spirit, that power of resurrection is here today. Amen? Amen. And God wants you to not only receive that power, but to walk in it according to his will and purpose in your life. Amen? Amen. God is in the business of setting people free. Jesus said, I have come to set the captives free. Amen? Amen. And who the Son sets free is free, is free indeed. indeed. Matter of fact, one of my favorite scriptures, one of my hallmark scriptures is Luke 12, 32, where it says this. It says, fear not, little flock, for it is, my good, is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God has established the kingdom of God in your heart by the power of his resurrection. Matter of fact, that resurrection was so powerful that in Matthew it tells us that some of the saints that had already passed away were risen up with Christ on that same day. Because when, when he rose up, the power of that resurrection touched and empowered everything around it. And that power is now being transmitted through each of you into your daily lives and to the people that you meet. God is on the move today as he was 2,000 years ago. He has not changed. For Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Amen? Amen. It's time to trust in that power that God has put in you, his Holy Spirit. It's time to allow that spirit to come in and to make changes. It's time to be set free. No matter what your addiction is, no matter what your weakness is, the power of the resurrection exists and it will never lose its power. Amen? Amen. You are God's chosen people for this time. As Esther said, for such a time as this, you have been chosen. Each and every one of you are important. Each and every one of you is, are not a spare part. You are vital and unique. And you have a sacred identity in Christ that's yours and yours alone. And God is going to use that to reach the foothills. Amen? Amen. But we can't do it in our own strength. We can't reach our community in our own abilities. We have to trust the power that God has put in us. Amen? Amen. 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 I want you to bow your heads right now and just close your eyes. I want you to think about this. God put the same spirit that he rose Jesus with, he has put that spirit in you now as you have become his follower. But if there's anyone here that has never followed Jesus Christ, if there's anyone here that has never given his life to the Lord, you have an opportunity today. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that God has chosen for you to receive his goodness and his grace. 
and his truth. If there's anyone here that has never received Jesus Christ, in a moment we're going to say a prayer together, and I want you to say it with all your heart. Because the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a sure thing. And if you can't see it through history, see it by the changed lives sitting all around you today. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to say this prayer with me. Say it with all your heart as you commit your life to Jesus. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. I repent of all my sins. I repent of all my sins. All my wrong actions. All my wrong actions. All my wrong thoughts. All my wrong thoughts. And I receive today. And I receive today. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Change me now. Change me now. Take control now. Take control now. Deliver me now. Deliver me now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. With your head still bowed and every eye closed, if you said that for the first time, or you made a significant recommitment, in a moment I'm going to ask you to take a step of faith and to raise your hands and to show heaven that you meant what you said. Count of three, raise them high. One, two, three. Let me see those hands go up. Let me see them. Praise God. Glory to God. Give a shout to the Lord. Glory to God. Woo! Woo! Make sure you fill out that connection card. I want to close this out. As Pastor David said, there are connection cards in the back. If anybody feels led, we're, we need help tearing down. And just a reminder, I'm not in this area, but these awesome pastors on stage all have churches to get connected. So let's, let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this beautiful service. I pray for each person here that they would continually be touched by your presence. And Lord, I just feel that some need healing. I just speak healing to sickness and disease, those with cancer, that they would be healed in the name of Jesus. Yes, be blessed and continue to follow him all your days. In Jesus' name. Amen. Right, this is the last song, so if you guys want to stand up. If you know the words, sing along. It's time to wake up. <laughs> darkness flees through you my heart screams I am free yes I am free and I'm free The price is paid for you I'm not afraid For you there's victory Because of you my soul sings I am free Yes I am free And I'm free to
is free and deep. Sunsets free is free and true. The sun.